the first Roanoke colony, North America, 1585. I opened my eyes to see nothing. Darkness pressed over my face like the palm of a hand, but that wasn't what scared me. No, no, please. I wished I'd never come here. The devil in the woods was coming for me, just as he'd come for the others, and now there was no one left to hear me scream. There was nowhere to run. Go away! The window shutter creaked open. Moonlight streaked in. I saw the inside of my shack, the pile of straw where I slept, and the figure sprawled upon it. It didn't look human. Decay had eaten it away. But I recognized the threadbare doublet covering rotting flesh. Samuel? No! It was my brother. He'd only been dead a month. The devil had unearthed his grave, placed him beside me while I slept. He had already been inside my shack. He was taunting me. I was the only one who'd seen him face to face. His claws, his wolf's eyes glinting beneath a long black coat. There's no escape from him, even in death. My journal was all I had left. I couldn't save myself, but maybe I could warn others. Run! Go back for the sake of your souls. Realm presents Roanoke Falls, Episode 1. The Second Roanoke Colony, two years later. The blood won't come out. I've tried ashlai and urine, but it's still there. Blood splattering my apron. Our last goat hangs upside down against the cabin, its blood pooling in the dirt. My chafed hands sting as the air bites them. They look like they belong to someone else. I didn't have these calluses or this peeling skin when we left England. Roanoke, we should never have come here. If it's this bad now, how will we face winter? The first colony fell to ruin. Why should we be any different? Ruined. A ragged hole gapes in my apron. Agnes? Agnes, what's happened? Although Thomas is twice my age, he walks towards me with the energy of a much younger man. Nothing. I I didn't mean to frighten you. I just had an accident and I... I... Agnes, what is this? He takes in the dead animal, the thick bloody mud that encroaches on my shoes. For dinner, Thomas. For dinner. I keep my eyes steady on his face. You know what the settlement will say. You hear the whispers. If they reach me, they certainly reach you. How can I show them that I am a man of God who can lead them through this land if my wife is... Your wife is strong and good with a knife. We've only had porridge for days, Thomas. We're hungry. We need the meat. Take our beasts to Caleb Jeffers next time. You know he handles our butchering. I thought you were hurt. This... Slaughtering is not the role of a minister's wife. But now I must go. I'm late to pray with the Cox family. Daniel Cox is still missing, then. It's easy to become separated in those woods. But he won't have come to any harm, wife. He was carrying a musket, ready to hunt. He'll find his way home. The Lord will guide him back to us. Yes, of course. God willing. I look towards the woods. They seem to be reaching out, ready to pull someone in. I don't think we'll ever see Daniel Cox again. Please be useful while I'm gone. Go and watch little Prudence. With her mother ill, she needs a woman's hand 
and it's your Christian duty to help her, Agnes. It's good preparation for when we have a child of our own. I don't think that will be any time soon. You've bled? But, Thomas, don't you think it's for the best? I'd be terrified to bring a child into this place. How would we feed it and keep it warm through the winter? Oh, Agnes, where is your faith? I don't tell him it's gone. I don't believe that God can reach us here. We lost him somewhere out at sea. And where is your patience? We've been married for less than two years. Give it time. His face grows stern. Caleb Jeffers wed obedience six months after us. They have a healthy baby boy. Well, maybe you chose the wrong bride. Something shifts behind his eyes, and he puts a gentle hand on my shoulder. I'll see you in a few hours, Agnes. Yes, husband. When he's out of sight, I take my ruined, bloody apron and rip it to shreds. The Greenaway house is just ahead. Prudence sits on a tree stump, watching her father Zachary chop wood. A small pewter brooch is pinned to the front of her bodice. And suddenly I can't take another step. The thought of being under that roof with Zachary's sharp, judgmental glare. And if obedience is visiting, it will be worse. A devout woman with a perfect baby to coo at. I turn to go. Mistress Blair, stop. Where are you going? Oh, hello, Prudence. How are you all? Is your wife feeling any better, Goodman Greenaway? She's asleep. She sleeps a lot. Are you going for a walk? Can I join you? We could gather mushrooms. I'm so hungry. May I go, Father? <clears throat> well, so long as you're not bothering me. Oh, thank you, Father. Mistress Blair, just wait a moment while I fetch my basket. It's awkward without Prudence's cheer between us. Don't worry, I'll watch over your daughter closely. His lips twist. But who will be watching you, Mistress Blair? Before I can answer, Prudence comes racing out. I'm ready! Let's go! Neither of us say goodbye. Prudence leads the way. I'm too angry to concentrate on where we're headed, stewing on Zachary's words. My hand strays to the pouch of glass beads I keep tucked away in my skirts. Hearing the click of the small, hard globes brings me comfort. There's a tug on my dress. Why doesn't my father like you? Maybe it's better you ask him that. I did. He said Thomas wasn't meant to marry you. Well, that's true. My husband was going to marry your sister, Obedience. But then my father died, and Sir Thomas agreed to look after me. I can still see that day. Thomas's small cramped chapel in Bristol. My mother's dress of French lace hanging loosely on me. She had been much taller. Our marriage was an act of charity because my father was once good to Thomas. I didn't have a choice, but at least I had a home in a familiar place. And then came the news. We were leaving for the new world. Obedience is married to Caleb now, so it doesn't matter anymore. It matters to your father. What does bewitch mean? Why would you ask that? I heard my sister Obedience say it by the fire one night. They thought I was asleep, but I heard them say you bewitched your husband. My heart skips a beat. If the Greenaways had seen me slaughter the goat this morning... Thomas was right to be angry. I can imagine the whispers. Pagan. Witch. That's a dangerous word, Prudence. Be careful with it. I'll try. We're close to the edge of the forest now. Other leaves are bruising red, brown, and a sickly yellow. Prudence skips forward. There's something about these woods. Something I don't like. Stop here. We can find mushrooms on the outskirts. No, there aren't any left here. I've looked. But there will be some in the woods. And there's something else I want to show you. No, we shouldn't go wandering in the forest. Didn't you hear that Daniel Cox got lost in there? I won't get lost. I come here all the time. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Straight into the thicket. My heart plunges, but I have no choice except to follow. <sighs> it smells earthy and damp beneath the canopy of leaves. Prudence! Prudence! 
Slow down. Wait for me. Prudence! Prudence! And then I see her. She leans behind a tree, almost like she's whispering to it. Prudence, don't you run from me like that. You don't need to worry, Mistress Blair. It's safe here. My friend looks after me. My skin crawls. Suddenly I have the feeling of being watched. Your friend? And who would that be? One of the Croatoan? No, it's... Promise you won't laugh at me. I won't. There's a spirit here. Someone left. From before. Thomas would be angry at me for listening to superstition, but I can't help it. Are you saying you've seen a ghost? Not a ghost. More of a shadow. I think he's from heaven. A guide sent to us from above. Oh, just like we pray for in church every day. Prudence's imagination must be going mad in this unknown. Is he watching us now? Your friend? No. I kneel next to her. Shadows can hide things from you, Prudence. They can be treacherous. It would probably be best that you don't come here anymore. Prudence fiddles with her pewter brooch as I rise to my feet. Then she grabs my hand. Come on, I want to show you a secret. It will be quick, I promise. Branches snag at my clothes, my hair, my skin as she pulls me in deeper. This is my favorite spot. She points to the other side of a grimy stream. A ruined shack with one sightless window squats beneath the trees. What's that? That's the best bit. The little house. Come and see. There shouldn't be a house this far out from the settlement. Something bad happened in that shack. I can feel it in my bones. I should turn back. But I don't. Something draws me in. Colder, darker on this side of the water. It stinks of decay. Spanish moss droops over the collapsed roof. Only two walls stand, streaked with bird dung and moss. Runes are carved in the dirt by the door. I can't read them, but I know that they're used for protection, to keep something out. Prudence strolls into the ruins. Prudence, wait! I just need to find something. Here it is. I kept it covered up so it was safe. She turns to me with a ragged book clasped in her hands. This is what I wanted to show you. Can you read? Yes, Thomas taught me. I know the scriptures by heart, but I haven't learned my letters. I think it's something left over from before. Do you think it might say what happened to the other colony? Swallowing, I take the damp book into my hands. It's homemade paper sewn together with twine. It's hard to see the faded ink on the waterlogged paper. Read it aloud to me. (sighs) Let's see. I never imagined people people could be be so so cruel. cruel. They They told told me we'd create a new world, a place of love and friendship, but that was a lie. Every Every man man is for himself in the end. God help me to bear it. I don't want this to be my final home. Whoever this person was, I can taste their unhappiness as I speak their words. It's achingly like my own. Go on. I can't. It will only scare Prudence to hear of what happened, what's probably awaiting us. The writing's old and faded. I I really can't make it out in this light. Tell you what, we'll make a bargain, Prudence. If I tell you what the book says, you must promise not to walk out here on your own again. That's not fair. Well, that's how a deal works. I do something for you, and you do something for me. Prudence's eyes slide away to the trees. All right, then. I'll stop coming here. But you have to tell me exactly what the book says. I'll make something up to tell her. Of course. Now, come on. It's time to get back to the settlement. She lets me guide her by the shoulder away from the shack. Her great weight lifts from me as we leave. I think of Daniel Cox... Stranded out here alone. (gasps) What was that? I spin around. 
heart pounding, staring deep into the tangle of branches. But I can't see anything out there. The congregation sits stiffly in their clean white collars and stovepipe hats. James Worthing, our blacksmith, stares at his hands and refuses to meet anyone's eyes. The poor man lost his wife on the voyage over and only comes out for church. He hides himself away in the forge, talking more to the horses that he shoes than to other people. I wish I could do the same. His cheeks are flushed, and for the first time I notice he is handsome. Brown hair, curling up just above his collar, strong jawline. Obedience Jeffers positions her baby proudly on her shoulder, trying to angle his small face towards where Thomas stands, alone at the front of the church. I know of your struggles. The crops are barren, the livestock scarce. But these are but trials to test our faith. We can overcome Amen. Those who came before us failed because their faith was weak. The devil prowls around, sowing doubt among us. Resist him, and let the Lord strengthen your spirit. God is good. Amen. God is good. I didn't believe this when we left England, and I don't believe it now. We should have taken the failure of the last settlement as a warning and stayed far away. Just how much suffering lays ahead of us in the coming months. The journal Prudence found might have the answer. It sits on my lap, beneath my prayer book, burning against my skirts like a hot coal. I haven't shared it with Thomas. He doesn't want to know the real fate of the last colony. He wants to pretend everything will be fine if we only believe. Thomas opens his leather Bible and begins to read aloud. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God, out of the fish's belly. This is my chance. I slip the journal inside my prayer book and open it to read. The ink is faded with age. They threw us out of the settlement. Sickness spreads quicker than fire and puts every life at risk. They had no choice. But God, forgive me, I resent them. I hate them for doing this to us. Samuel suffers so much. We have only a small shack to protect us from the cold. A sensible woman would leave her brother to die and save herself. I just can't. He doesn't even know me anymore. Hannah, I tell him. I'm Hannah. My flesh creeps. A sickness. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward the holy temple. I search for a list of symptoms. Instead... I see the writing change to a hasty scroll. Maybe we are safer out here. We heard screaming from the village. I ran to see what had happened. They found a body. I could see the red soaking the earth from where they dragged him away. (sighs) My throat is so tight I can barely swallow. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. I glance back down to the book. There is a darkness at work here. I feel it stealing closer day by day. Samuel grows more ill. He coughs blood. We are cursed. The people were talking about some kind of creature. Its eyes burned, they said. They burned red like... Lucifer! Cold wind gusts in. As one, the congregation whip around to see a man staggering up the aisle. Blood drips in his wake. His clothing is torn and ragged, showing patches of bruised skin. One eye has sealed shut. There's a mark over it, like the rake of a claw. Obedience clutches her baby. The man can barely walk. His knees unhinged and he drops beside my pew. Daniel? Daniel Cox? He's come back. Thomas dashes forward and pulls the man to a kneeling position. I told you faith would bring him back to us. Across the chapel, Daniel's wife Mercy clasps a hand to her mouth. Daniel looks nothing like the man we lost. He reeks of coppery blood and something else, something foul. Sulfur! Where were you? What happened to you? Daniel's one eye roams wildly about, focusing at last on the cross. When he opens his lips, blood dribbles out, his missing teeth. I came to warn you. God can't 
Save us here. <gasps> For shame, Daniel. These words belong to something May God have else. Mercy, so. Who? The word flies from my lips before I can stop it. Prudence leans forward on her bench. Satan! Created and produced by Realm. Your portal to another world. Listen away. Roanoke Falls is written by Laura Purcell, produced by Nicole Otto and Haley Wagreich, and executive produced by John Carpenter, Sandy King Carpenter, and Molly Barton. Performed by India Dupre, Eric T.D., Anthony Garland, Theo Devaney, Jack Hawkins, Stella Balick Carr, Jess Nahikian, Callie Shatara, Kyle McCarley, Craig Robert Young, Caroline Bloom. Audio production and direction by Kaylin West. Sound design by Fred Greenhalge and Rory O'Shea. Additional editing by Corey Barton. Original music by Hashem Asadullahi. With orchestration by Andrew Rowan. Featuring performances by Kevin Devine, Alba Ponce de Leon, Max Kuttner, Carl McComas Reichel, and Peter Brandler. Cover art by Kindle Thomas. <laughs>